mention in the first panel um, on, I think that, as I'd mentioned, the, the idea of um, uh, the, the, the treaty, um, for, it's uh, an ongoing uh, consultation to talk about putting together a treaty at the UN level, um, transnational corporations and, tra and human rights. And this is, a, is sort of a campaign that some social movements have been involved in, and social justice movements and so on. Um, and you know, it'd be just interesting to see how this campaign for energy democracy sort of links with other campaigns on the international level, what's, what that looks like, and how that influences what's going on here. Okay, thank you. Um, I had Jenny, sorry, and then I'll put you yeah. in, and then there's the cap at the... So I'm Jenny Patient, I'm based in Sheffield. Um, I've been part of Sheffield Climate Alliance and several of the groups that are represented here today. But I'm now doing a PhD at Sheffield University and um, I very much want that to be, it's about climate change and trade unions' response to it. So I very much want to be a resource for this movement and um, just to echo some of the things that were said, you know, energy transformation is a massive thing and we need lots of detailed work to be going on on it. Somehow we need to engage those unions that are kind of would rather not have this conversation, but, you know, to actually get that to happen. And I love what Wade was saying about taking that to the grassroots and how can we actually make that you know, sort of m more understandable to more people. Because some of these debates get into very, t we've already heard today, I think, they get into very technical ding-dongs between, oh, we should do this or we should do that. But, you know, how do we tell as trade unionists? You know, how do we work out where to put our energy, where to put our effort? Um, and that's really what I want to my work to be about. And I'm a, a Unite member, very keen to particularly make contact with people in Unite, but also GMB, the industrial unions is what I'm mainly looking at. Um, but but there is a Greener Jobs Alliance have a very good newsletter, which is a good starting point on some of these issues, and I really recommend that to everybody in the room, really. Thank you. All right, okay, Tina, and then you, and then the guy in the middle. Two things I was thinking about when I think about unions, and I'm not, I'm with the anti-fracking movement. But the two things I was thinking about, we've just come back from Ireland doing a, a diverse Northern Ireland for the public service, uh, public sector, their um, pensions. And I wonder, because the, the power of your unions is your numbers, you, know, you are vast numbers, and if you insisted that your pensions were divested from the fossil fuel industries, you would have a great deal of power and sway in that. Because in the end, I think even on a selfish level, as individuals beyond your union, you know this is a dying industry that we're all going to fight till we kill it. So in other words, you're fighting to kill your pensions, because if they don't divest soon, and the, one of the common questions, we just toured Ireland for three days, one of the most common questions we got was, well, what should we put it in? And what was proved, with the, particularly with the Northern Ireland um, public sector pension, is that it was a well-performing pension if you removed the oil, gas, yeah. and the fossil fuel. You didn't have to say, oh, quick, let's invest in this. It already had adequate investments. And I understand not everything in life is perfect, but it's like when I get asked, did you travel by car? Well, sometimes I do. Because I live in an imperfect world with imperfect tools, and at least we are striving to make them better. And then just one other thing that I've not seen used, and I don't believe it's been used by unions since the 70s when it was used in Australia, which is a thing called a green ban. I don't know if you've heard of this. And this is something where the workers working on the Sydney Opera House refused to build um, a car park on the basis that it was Aboriginal land. And so I think it remains without a car park as a basis for this. And they were enabled to strike using this thing called a green ban. So perhaps if you're in an industry and doing jobs where you know and you find out some of the things you work with are harmful and causing you know, degradation of the planet, then can you not form together, I'm sorry, I'm suggesting this to people who aren't, and it's not me that would be doing it, but is there things you can do to say, right, well, I refuse because I do have a grandchild and this is what gets me up every day and makes me do my job as an activist, is that... And so in the room, there are other people who could then stand up and say, I want to protect my pension, I'll, I'll make my union stand with me to divest, and I'd like to stop doing this role in my job because it's harming the planet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, just quickly take two more, and then we're going to have to finish because we're going to get into the lunch. Yeah, very quickly, uh, Kevin Freer, I'm a cancer, uh, lady cancer in Lancaster, just come from a, a two-day conference of local authorities. Um, Whitehead spoke, he said, right, OK, uh, we've got to um, retrofit for uh, 4 million homes. Uh, that will create less of a demand for, for the renewable energy. Um, and we're going to do that by giving money to local authorities. 
if you start, if local authorities like Lancaster start adopting the Preston model, it means that, that uh, you're going to have a workforce that is local, that, that is worker controlled uh, and, and, and uh, uh, community controlled. Uh, that, to me, is a, is, is a blueprint for, for going forward. Use less energy and democratise it through local authorities and, and cooperatives. Yeah, good stuff. And the last. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, my name's Chris. Uh, I, work, I work for Beef on Planet. I coordinate fossil fuel divestment in UK universities. Um, yeah, and so I guess what I wanted to really quickly say was one point about finance, one point about the role of unions. In terms of, yeah, the finance stuff, I think very often when we talk about a just transition, it's easy to kind of mostly focus on how do we get to renewables, how do we make that democratic and just. Mm -hmm. We almost kind of sometimes forgetting, but the equal part of that is keeping fossil fuels in the ground. Um, and there's this question of finance, purely how do we finance that just transition? How do we finance kind of mass investment in infrastructure that will be necessary to have a kind of an economy locked into renewables? But also, how do we tame, how do we take control of the kind of institutions of finance that are continually like locking us in to fossil fuel extraction? And that's everywhere from fracking in the north of England to kind of big, unnecessary gas pipelines across the continent, as well as extraction projects in the global south. Mm -hmm. And I guess the provocation is for everyone to think about, you know, there are bank fees like, not bank fees, banks like Barclays, NHSBC, domiciled in the UK, to put billions and billions into extraction. What demands can we be making of governments in power? What can we be doing with kind of tactics in our repertoire of trade unionists to repurpose the money that they have? How do we force really those banks to stop financing extraction and start financing uh, the kind of infrastructure projects that we want and to really quickly kind of like yeah totally agree with what Tina said and I think what you said as well what what are the tactics that we have in our repertoire um, industrial action and strikes how can we use them to yes definitely say well we're not going to participate in the construction of these projects but also say these are the projects we want to participate in the construction of and so striking for a positive um, demand as well. Okay, thank you. Right, thanks for that. Quickly, give Alison a chance to come back, and I'll say just two short points. Um, yeah, so I just quickly, um, I can't answer everything, and there, obviously there were some really good contributions and um, things um, that deserve more um, kind of reply and discussion on. But firstly, trade union energy democracy, we have got the ear of um, Rebecca Long Bailey because. Um, Rebecca's writing, um, she's the shadow um, biz um, secretary, and she's writing an industrial strategy, and she recognises that climate change, energy transition, just transition, has to be at the core of any new industrial strategy. Labour understand that. Um, the last manifesto was built on those ideas. I think, in principle, we're there, we've won the argument, but it's how do we of all the knowledge in this room even, we all recognise how complex it is, you know, how long we need the short term, the medium term, the long term, we need money, we need finance, we might be surrounded by, you know, a hostile environment, um, trying to implement that if there is a uh, Jeremy Corbyn government. Um, I haven't got all the answers to that, but I do know that, um, of course, the trade unions will be on board, ordinary members should be on board in terms of, you know, if we're going to kind of, for example, radicalise and rewire public services, which is what the Corbyn agenda is about, including energy, we're talking about creating cooperatives. How do they relate to trade unions? Um, we're talking about, you know, social enterprise. I was at a social enterprise conference last week. They love this agenda because they think it's all about social value. They think they're going to increase their whole social enterprises as part of this agenda. We have to talk to those people though as well because we have to, if they've got the same values and this is things that John McDonald's got to do. So there are lots of people who are on board for all sorts of different reasons for the rewiring of local services including energy democracy. Um, now, what I want to say is, I've, I said this to Barry a couple of years ago, I think me could set up a Labour Energy Forum at the Labour Party. I said, we do need some kind of minister or secretary for a just transition. We've got to have it, because their job would be to tell all these ministers that they've got to join up all this stuff. There's no point Barry going off to do a trade deal, which hasn't actually isn't in line with what we need for our just transition plan. We need someone who's going to be the anchor. Um, coming out of that meeting two years ago, I had lots of local authority councillors saying we would love to do um, this model of neutral energy. 
but nobody in government. Who do we talk to? So, so everybody needs that kind of anchored personal department. And that is something that I think the Labour Party would um, need to create, and I think it would be a really valuable investment. Um, energy democracy is, um, to me, about democracy, and I agree what we were saying. Unison, we wanted to put a lot of funds in just to go around and roll out an energy democracy um, project, programme, Go to every branch, we've got about 500 or 600 branches in Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, England, to explain why we support energy democracy. So that our members understood that actually it was about their choices locally. <coughs> it was about why also there's five continents which have got energy democracy um, you know, hubs, if you like. We're trying to create one in Europe. We're trying to make such huge links in Europe around this agenda so that it's kind of horizontal as well as vertical, and it's coming from the top and the bottom, if you like. Um, all this is happening. We didn't get, in the end, Brexit happened in the referendum, so that work got shelved because we had to suddenly um, campaign around the referendum and then now we're doing Brexit work. So there's no reason why, though, this can't happen uh, now that once we've got Brexit, kind of some halfway position in March. Lastly, I just wanted to say that energy democracy is whatever you like it to be. That's the whole point. It's not centralised. It's not anybody telling anybody. It is our agenda, and um, that's why um, we want people to understand that that's got to be at the core of it. Because when um, CHUED meets, it meets people at different development levels all around the world. They've got completely different issues that they're facing, but the goals and the aims are the same. So there can't be one kind of answer for everything. It's about people locally and globally trying to um, find solutions for the same aims. I just want to say, what do we do um, globally? Unison works globally with the Public Services International. I know transport unions work with the International Transport Federation. Most unions, and I'm not sure what PCS, I think or PSI with ourselves, um, everybody has in those um, global federations a um, program which will include um, anti-privatisation. But we have a lot more than that. We do lots around supply chains. And in those supply chains, we're talking about fair and trade uh, justice, okay, which is looking at anti-slavery um, statements. You know, um, there's a big campaign that we do working on that. We're looking at sustainable goals the United Nations have set. How has that all been linked up? So we have an international team in Unison. We're unique, actually, because these are dying out in a lot of trade unions. We still have one, and we still do all that international work linking it with what we're trying to do with trade union energy democracy in this country as well. So I urge you, if you're in a trade union, make sure you make sure your union is doing international connections with what we're trying to do domestically as well. So that's my contribution. All right, thanks, Az. I know everybody wants to get off for lunch. Just a couple of quick things. And I think Alison sort of summed that up really well, and it's a shame we haven't been able to address all the questions. But... Um, I think it's important and we can't wait for a Labour government. We have to start doing stuff yes. now and we have to start pushing this agenda um, because you know, we may not even get a Labour government or SNP in Scotland or whatever. So th this is something that has to be pushed from the, the bottom. We do need those difficult conversations around nuclear. I totally agree. And I think this is the whole point why we need to be discussing this in our trade unions. We've got a very difficult conversation around gas as well um, in the GMB. Um, but we're making some progress on these things. Um, it is starting to get there, but... What, what, one reason why unions are very protected, one, because of their membership, but actually some of those industries are very well-paid jobs. Um, so it, it, it's understandable that they're fighting for those jobs. So we, we have to um, recognise that reality. So the only thing I'm just going to end on, PCS actually produced a pamphlet last year, Just Transition and Energy Democracy. If you haven't seen it, happy to give you a, one of my few copies here. Um, and this actually talks about, it touched on some things that Alison mentioned about <coughs> having a, a minister for just transition. We're actually thinking about how you set up a national climate service, what that would look like within the civil service. So those of you going to the climate jobs workshop later, um, this is how we've started to sort of frame some of this as a civil service union now role within that debate. Um, do go and visit the Greener Jobs Alliance web pages. They're very, very good. They've got some online tools there as well for some training in um, climate justice. You can do that in trade unions with branches as well. They are set up to be interactive with just individuals. Um, do visit the Trade Unions for Energy Democracy website that's got a, a wonderful um, resources on there, but also about how we are connecting up 
globally, including working with unions in the, the Philippines and the particular challenges they face with uh, the Duterte um, government, which is quite horrific compared to obviously what we have to face here. And finally, just a reminder, 22nd of September in Scotland for the Fast Lane demonstration. Let's all be there and, and support that mm. as well. So yeah, yeah, you need to send buses. Yep. <laughs> 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 If anybody's free on the 4th of June, Preston New Road, we're doing, the, doing a big call out for the unions if you could come up and support us to stop fracking. You'll see that all over online because I'm going to try and get everyone to share it for me. Thank you. Thank you. I think we did a couple of